Blaney now. You have the floor. I'm chair, and I just want to state that I was really impacted by the questions of Mr. Viss. I had an opportunity to drive through parts of his riding during the the fire, forest fires, and it was quite shocking the impact that it had on that area. And that leads me to the question that I would like to ask through you, Madam Chair, is Elections Canada actually starting to explore how to adapt to the impacts of climate change. We have seen in BC in particular some significant um, rain that has provided huge flooding that isolated many of our communities. We saw the forest fires destabilize communities, send them out. I, I mean, if I had 15 minutes to, to save my life, I certainly wouldn't be thinking, must remember to bring my license so that I can go and vote. So with these changes happening, and we're seeing them, I'm just wondering if Elections Canada is actually putting any research and work into looking at how we can make sure that regardless of what happens, people continue to have their right to vote in these most extreme situations that can happen anywhere and shut down different parts of our country. How do do we prepare to respond to that, Madam Chair? Uh, that's my question. Thank you, Madam Chair, for the question. We uh, It is certainly something that struck us after the, not this election, but the prior election, where there were many, many storms in, uh, around Winnipeg in particular, but also uh, uh, out east. And we had to deploy uh, people who were flown in from uh, headquarters here in Ottawa to serve uh, hydro workers uh, who were who were uh, being at, you know uh, helping out uh, with the power outages uh, in Winnipeg. And we realized then that the model that we had to serve those those hydro workers, we had to have something called an election in the box where we we plan for the possibility of having to to deploy uh, resources and adjust uh, to an election. Um, is it a complete, you know, uh, fail-proof system? Absolutely not. This is, we certainly are aware of this and every election we, we need to learn from, from those experiences. One of the challenges that you point out and it's been pointed out by uh, other members before is the ID rules. So should we be able to relax voter ID rules in the case of electors who are displaced and may not have with them all of the ID uh, requirements? Uh, we have not done that so far and that's perhaps something that I need to consider. I have to say that I've not received evidence uh, of that being a problem, but I, but I, that may not be uh, may not be true in the sense that there may actually have been problems. So we'll need to look into that particular aspect, but we do have some planning, some contingencies, and we have some teams that monitor uh, the weather events during elections and that, that uh, prepare to adjust the service offerings as we look into the, uh, the, 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 the extreme weather events.